Hi guys, I'm Santori Mudpig, and welcome back to Blade Runner on PC, where we now continue on with Act 2. I hope you aren't camped out there with a bottle of tequila. Oh, very funny. Early bird slays the worm, McCoy. Don't worry, I'm up, Lieutenant. What's the buzz? One of Tyrell's employees got his fat face splattered all over the marble interior of the Tyrell building. Inside? That's right, but we also got a sweet little break on it. Tyrell's surveillance system recorded the whole shebang. Beautiful. How many perps? Just one. I don't know if it's related to the runs that are dealer or not. Tyrell security will have the disc for you when you get there. You'll be good, killer. All right, so off to the Tyrell Corporation to check out the crime scene. But first, let's give some num nums to Maggie. Here you go, baby. Dinner time. Even though it's breakfast. Okay. Your floor number, please. To the roof. And we'll jump in our spinner. That long run to the spinner. So Rail Corporation is pretty obvious where it is, right there at the top. Those two iconic buildings. in the reception with a security guard. McCoy, LPD. Uh, yeah, just a minute. Where do I go? Grav test on the east wing, 66th floor. Uh, here's the footage from the security cameras. You get a pretty good look at the man's face. That was How good did of him. past you guys? He pretended to be a delivery man. Dr. Eisendooler ordered in a lot, so it didn't seem unusual. Yeah, so obviously they don't I check more questions for delivery you, guys. So. Yes, sir. Weapons. I think it'd be pretty standard considering the line of work. Here we are. So there's a couple of things on the floor to check out for. We've got another earring on the floor. The earring was shaped like an insect. I didn't know much about jewelry, but it looked like junk to me. Like the cheap crap sold Second at the dragon stands fly. shops of Animoid Row. It may or may not also be a brochure on the floor as well. In my case, there is no brochure. Once you've got your items, just head on inside. Jesus. I've seen worse, but not by much. Learn anything? You could strain him through a sieve. That's it all then. In here we've got a... Kingston Kitchen's takeout box. A takeout box from Kingston Kitchens. And there will also be a dog collar just in front of the door as well. The dog collar has a name on it. Ricky, maybe? And then you want to check out the body. Obviously he'd been killed with an explosive, and not just because he'd been plastered on the wall with a thousand strokes. The detonator wire I'd pulled out of his skull told the whole story. The killer was an expert. The charge had been big enough to do the job, but not big enough to shatter the soundproof walls of the float chamber. But I wondered why the killer didn't just shoot him. So that's your evidence. You'll want to also ask the photographer about the earring. His earring yours? Maybe it belonged to that other cop who was up here. The babe with the shades and the cigarettes. Ain't her style. Call her babe to her face, you're liable to end up with a severe limp. Some crystals in here, aka steel. And then there's nothing I'd much other than these dogs. And live ones in the last 24 hours, and now it was dogs. Three of them. I thought about Maggie and nearly threw up. And that leaves you, so you just head on back outside of this room. And then back in here, the left hand side panel of these computer row. If you click on there. Someone had tried to access a bunch of protected files on the Tyrell network and failed. Not just once, but a dozen times. Tyrell engineers might forget their passwords, but what would the Grav Lab boys need with replicant DNA sequences and incept dates? 
So click again to use his pet's password. Eisendahl had used his dog's name as a password. The Tyrell brass wouldn't be too happy if they knew I was snagging a copy of their files, but someone had wanted them bad enough to kill Eisendahler, so I figured they must be worth having. And then that's it for up here. And you might as well head back down to the lobby. Lagging behind again? Kusa didn't say anything about me working with a partner. Oh, in a pig's ass, Slim. No, I'm following up on my own. Could be it's linked to this Tyrell debacle. How's yours connected to mine? I'm still fitting the pieces together. You know the moon bus massacre that went down last month? Gaff mentioned something about it. The rogue skin jobs probably flew to Earth. And one of them is a demolitions expert, similar MO to your Vic upstairs. Hell of a coincidence. I'll call you if I find out anything more about your case. So once you finish talking with Steele, you just want to have a couple of more words with the security guard here at the desk. So you just work your way down the list. You friendly with Eisendeller? Most of the employees they see coming in morning and night, but old Marcus, I mean, uh, Dr. Eisendeller, he almost never left his lab. He afraid of somebody? I think it had something to do with the air outside and the germs. I once heard him complain about it. Smart. What was his job? Grub test chief engineer. The lab runs tests to see how a replicant would perform in different planetary gravitational fields. That kind of thing. One of the other engineers could tell you more. You know if anyone lost an earring like this one lately? Not one of the employees, that's for sure. The boss enforces a strict dress code around here. How did Eisendeller's moo moo fit in? <laughs> hey, you know, company rules only apply to the lesser mortals. How do I get in to see the big boss? You don't, unless he wants to see you. Okay. How do I make him want to see me? Well, you could call his personal assistant. Who is? Don't know, offhand. Yeah, I get the picture. You know anything about Tyrell's computer system? Security is tight as a drum, if that's what you're asking. Somebody tried to access restricted data from the terminal in Dr. Eisendeller's office. But they couldn't get in. Yeah. Looks like Dr. Tyrell keeps his files and safe that's and he keeps that. his employees. All that's left is go back to the police station and process all our evidence we've collected from upstairs. Until next time, guys, this is Antonio Mulpig saying bye for now.